Hey everyone, Black Cat Owner here, and today we are going to be doing another movie review. This will actually be the first review in a while in which the movie is not based on a comic book. And as you may recall, so far in every movie I've reviewed, I've actually praised the movie. So I'm sure a lot of you may be asking the question, when are you going to review a bad movie? Well, today. I'm going to review a movie that's so bad it ought to be outlawed by the Geneva Convention and it makes Batman and Robin look like Titanic. So what is this monstrosity I'm supposed to review? Norbit. Eddie Murphy, what the hell happened to you? You used to be so funny and your movies used to be awesome. And by awesome, I'm talking about 48 hours, Beverly Hills Cop, well, the first two anyway, the jury's still out on three, Trading Places and Coming to America. All funny movies, all of them awesome. Then somewhere down the line, all your movies started to suck. I mean, come on, name one good movie Eddie Murphy has done in the last 20 years besides the voice of Donkey and Shrek. While he did get an Oscar nomination for a supporting role in the 2006 movie Dreamgirls, which I have not seen yet, and he seemed like the lock to win the Oscar back then. So what happened? This movie happened. This movie cost him the Oscar. And that's not the worst of it. The worst tragedy about this movie is this movie made money. This was a box office hit when it should have been DOA like the rest of Eddie's movies in the last 10 years. This makes Nutty Professor 2, another bad film where Eddie wore a fat suit, look good. Even though the giant hamster turning Eddie's boss into a soprano was a nice touch. But anyway, I've said enough, so grab your popcorn tins and your vomit pails. It would be best not to confuse them. And let's get on with it. The movie opens with Norbit as a kid being tossed out of a car in front of an orphanage run by an Asian man played by none other than Eddie Murphy. Were they trying to offend every stereotype known to man in this movie? It's almost like Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. But at least Mickey Rooney's Asian character in that movie was funny. But to be fair, Eddie's Asian character is the only good character in this movie. So anyway, Norbert grows up in the orphanage and there he becomes close with a girl named Kate, who's a nice, cute, sweet girl, can do no wrong, so basically he starts out as a standard boy meets girl, boy falls for girl, boy loses girl, in this case she gets adopted, story. Then sometime Norbit is saved from bullies by a girl named Rasputia, which is supposed to be a female variation of the name Rasputin, one of the most evil men who ever lived. In fact, he might have been the original monster movie villain. No matter how many times you kill him, he keeps coming back. And Rasputia is a complete 180 from Kate. Instead of the nice, sweet, cute girl who can do no wrong like I just mentioned, we get an overweight, ugly, mean-spirited, oversexed abomination of a human being who practically forces her way onto Norbit's life because he's too nice and weak-minded to know the meaning of the word no. And if you think Rasputia was ugly as a kid, it gets worse. Fast forward to them as adults and Norbit has grown up to become Eddie Murphy only now Norbit looks like a 40-year-old Steve Urkel with a really bad fro and a voice that's reminiscent of his days playing the grown-up buckwheat from the Little Rascals during his days on Saturday Night Live. I'm sure a lot of you remember that. Buckwheat singing the greatest hits. And Rasputia? Well, I'll let this image speak for itself. This is what Eddie Murphy looks like in a fat suit and drag. Get used to that image, people. You will be seeing that for the rest of the movie. So they unfortunately get married and Norbit is working for Rasputia's brother's construction company, which serves as a front for their extortionist activities where they bully practically the whole town to pay protection fees. And speaking of the marriage, the sex scenes in this movie are painful to watch. Yes, I said it, painful. The sex scenes are so bad, it could very well be considered torture to watch it. Sadly, this is the only time in the movie where we feel sorry for Norbit. Primarily because he's a nice guy and this is a situation that nice guys frequently find themselves in every day. The whole concept of nice guys finish last or worse, they end up with chicks that look and act like Rasputia and that is clearly not good. Not a pleasant sight. And even worse, the only one who actually finds that thing attractive is her aerobics instructor played by Marlon Wayans. 
Marlon, come here a minute. Come here. Where's your dignity? But however, there's a light at the end of Norbit's tunnel. His old friend Kate, played by Tandy Newton, the token hot chick who should be offered an apology for being in this movie, comes back to town because she wants to take over the orphanage, and Norbit and Kate reconnect. But however, Kate has a fiancé, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., whose character is, surprise, surprise, a douchebag, who is in league with Norbit's evil brother-in-laws because they want to buy the orphanage so they can turn it into a, a nudie bar. Wow, so will they succeed? Will Norbit abandon his evil wife in favor of true love? The other interesting concept is that the hot girl is the good girl and the fat girl is the evil girl. Well, that part I like. I just wish real life would be more like that. But you can't always get what you want. Despite the horrifying mess that this movie truly is, there's actually some good performances. Well, in addition to Murphy's performance as the Asian orphanage owner, like I said again, that's Eddie's only good performance in the movie. Norbit is basically pathetic. Even when he does man up, he still reverts back to being the pathetic loser that the character is supposed to be, so it's hard to feel sorry for him, except once again during the sex scenes. And Rasputia, not good, period. No redeeming value in her at all. So basically, the Asian orphanage owner is the only good character in the movie. However, Tandy Newton actually brings a ray of light to this film, even though it doesn't deserve it. She needs to be apologized to for being in this movie. And it's good to see the pimps, one of whom is played by Eddie Griffin, as the good guys. Yeah, they were pretty funny too, but other than that, I'll just keep going. However, none of these things can save this movie. There's absolutely no redeeming quality to this movie at all. And that, combined with the fact that this movie has only a 9% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, I cannot ignore that. So there's nothing else to say except this movie is the biggest and most offensive, racist, stupid, disgusting, mean-spirited, irreverent, hopeless, shameless, pig-headed, vomit-inducing, worm-headed piece of crap I've ever seen in my life. But above all else, this movie sucks! Avoid it like the plague! If you have this movie on DVD, destroy it! Kill it before it multiplies! Hallelujah! Holy shit! <laughs> now how you doing, bitch? <sighs> Where's the Tylenol? So anyway, that is how I deal with bad movies. And now that you mention it, Angry Aussie was right. It does feel good to cut loose every now and then. Thanks for watching me endure this piece of crap movie. Hope my misery has brought you some entertainment. I know it's definitely better than the whole movie was. Oh yeah, one more thing. Earlier this year, Eddie Murphy and the director of Norbit teamed up to direct a movie called A Thousand Words. Anyone remember that one? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone remember that one at all? Neither do I. Karma's a bitch, Eddie. Karma's a bitch. So in the meantime, I'm Black Cow Owner, and I'm gonna go hurl now. Yeah.